Art in Five, Dan Flavin. Dan Flavin was an American artist born in New York in 1933. He's best known for his pioneering work with fluorescent light, which he used to create minimalist sculptures that explored the relationships between light, space, and color. Flavin began his artistic career in the 1950s as a painter, but he soon became interested in using light as a medium. He began experimenting with fluorescent tubes, which he saw as an industrial product that could be repurposed for artistic ends. In 1961, Flavin created his first light installation, which consisted of a single fluorescent tube mounted on a wall. The tube emitted a soft, cool light that filled the space around it, creating a subtle but powerful visual effect. Over the next few years, Flavin continued to refine his use of fluorescent light, creating increasingly complex installations that played with the qualities of light and space. Flavin's work was closely associated with the minimalist movement, which emerged in the 1960s as a reaction against the excesses of abstract expressionism. Minimalist artists sought to create simple, pared-down works that emphasized the essential qualities of their materials. In Flavin's case, this meant using fluorescent light to create installations that were both elegant and austere. His works often consisted of simple geometric shapes such as squares, circles, and rectangles that were arranged in precise configurations to create a sense of order and balance. One of Flavin's most famous works is his Monument series, which he began in 1964. The series consists of installations made up of fluorescent tubes arranged in specific configurations that reference monuments and memorials. The tubes emit a soft, diffused light that suggests the solemnity and reverence of a traditional monument, while also subverting its weighty symbolism with the playful and ephemeral qualities of light. Flavin's work was not without controversy. Some critics accused him of being too focused on technique and process and not enough on the emotional and intellectual content of his work. Others saw his use of industrial materials as a betrayal of the humanistic values of art. Despite these criticisms, Flavin's work continues to be highly influential in the world of contemporary art. His innovative use of fluorescent light has inspired countless artists and designers, and his legacy as a pioneer of minimalism remains secure. Flavin died in 1996 at the age of 63, but his work continues to be celebrated around the world. Major retrospectives of his work have been held at the Guggenheim Museum in New York, the Dia Art Foundation in Beacon, New York, and the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam, among others. Today, his sculptures and installations can be found in museums and galleries around the world, serving as a testament to his enduring influence on the art world. Solowit. Solowit was a renowned American artist known for his contributions to the conceptual art movement. He was born in 1928 in Hartford, Connecticut, and grew up in New Britain. Lewitt studied at Syracuse University, where he earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in 1949. Lewitt began his career as an artist in the 1960s, a time when the art world was undergoing significant changes. It was during this period that conceptual art emerged as a major new movement, challenging traditional notions of art and creativity. Lewitt quickly became a leading figure in this movement, and his work would go on to have a profound influence on the course of contemporary art. One of Lewitt's most significant contributions to conceptual art was his embrace of the idea that the concept or idea behind a work of art was more important than the final product itself. This idea became a cornerstone of conceptual art and set it apart from traditional art forms, which focused more on the physical creation of objects. Lewitt's work was characterized by its simplicity and geometric forms. He used basic shapes such as squares, circles, and triangles, arranging them in patterns that were often repeated throughout his work. He also explored the use of color, using bright, bold hues to create a sense of energy and movement in his pieces. One of Lewitt's most famous series of works is his wall drawings, which he began creating in the 1960s. These pieces were large-scale, site-specific installations that covered entire walls with geometric shapes and patterns. Each piece was unique, designed specifically for the space in which it was created. Lewitt created hundreds of wall drawings throughout his career, and they remain some of his most significant and influential works. Lewitt's work was not only influential within the art world, but also had a significant impact on design and architecture. He was commissioned to create many public artworks, 
including murals, sculptures, and installations, which are still on display in cities around the world. In addition to his art, LeWitt was also a prolific writer and thinker on the subject of art and creativity. He wrote extensively about his own work and the work of others, contributing to the ongoing conversation about the nature and purpose of art. LeWitt continued to create art until his death in 2007, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and influence artists and thinkers around the world. His emphasis on the importance of concept and his use of simple geometric forms have had a lasting impact on the art world, challenging traditional notions of what art can be and inspiring new generations of artists to push the boundaries of creativity. Art in 5 Solowit Jeff Koons is an American artist widely recognized for his provocative and controversial works that blur the boundaries between art and popular culture. Born in York, Pennsylvania in 1955, Koons has become one of the most influential and commercially successful artists of his generation. Koons' artistic career began in the late 1970s when he moved to New York City and worked as a commodities broker on Wall Street. However, his passion for art led him to pursue a career as a full-time artist. Influenced by pop art and conceptual art movements, Koons started creating works that challenged traditional notions of aesthetics and consumerism. One of Koons' notable bodies of work is his Banality series, which he created in the late 1980s. These sculptures, made of porcelain and painted wood, depict everyday objects and figures, such as Michael Jackson, porcelain puppies, and pink panthers. The series explores themes of kutz, mass culture, and the commodification of art, raising questions about taste, value, and the role of art in society. Another iconic series by Koons is the Balloon Dog series, which consists of large-scale stainless steel sculptures that resemble inflated balloon animals. These sculptures reflect Koons' fascination with childhood nostalgia, innocence, and the ephemeral nature of life. The shiny, reflective surfaces of the sculptures capture the viewer's attention and evoke a sense of wonder and playfulness. Koons is also known for his controversial collaboration with the fashion brand Louis Vuitton, where he created a line of handbags featuring famous artworks, including Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa and Vincent van Gogh's Wheatfield with Cypresses. This collaboration further solidified Koons' reputation as an artist who blurs the boundaries between art and commercialism, raising questions about the relationship between art, commerce, and the art market. Throughout his career, Koons has faced both praise and criticism for his work. His sculptures often require meticulous craftsmanship and the collaboration of skilled artisans to achieve their polished and flawless appearance. This approach challenges traditional notions of authorship and art, and raises questions about the role of the artist in the production of artworks. Kuhn's artworks have been exhibited in major museums and galleries around the world, including the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Tate Modern in London, and the Centre Pompidou in Paris. His works have also fetched record-breaking prices at auctions, making him one of the most financially successful artists in history. Jeff Kuhn's art continues to provoke and engage audiences, sparking conversations about art, consumerism, and popular culture. His works challenge conventional notions of taste and provoke discussions about nature and the value of art in contemporary society. Whether celebrated or criticized, Kuhn's contributions to the art world has undeniably left a lasting impact and established him as a leading figure in contemporary art. Jenny Holzer is an American artist known for her thought-provoking and politically charged artworks that combine text and installation. Born in Galapagos, Ohio in 1950, Holzer has become renowned for her use of language as a medium, utilizing words to challenge power structures, explore social issues, and provoke contemplation. Holzer initially studied painting and printmaking before turning her attention to text-based art in the late 1970s. She gained recognition for her Truism series, which features concise and ambiguous statements written in the form of aphroisms. These statements touch on various themes, including power, gender, violence, and consumerism. Holzer displayed her truisms in non-conventional ways, such as projecting them onto buildings, displaying them on electronic signs, and engraving them on public benches, disrupting traditional models of art display. Throughout her career, Holzer has experimented with various mediums and formats to convey her messages. She's employed LED signs, stone benches, billboards, projections, and even clothing to showcase her texts. This multidisciplinary approach allows her to engage with diverse audiences in both public and gallery settings, 
blurring the boundaries between art and the everyday world. One of Holzer's most significant works is her series titled Inflammatory Essays, created in the late 1970s and early 1980s. These essays, displayed as posters, feature provocative statements and viewpoints on topics such as feminism, war, and power structures. The essays challenge viewers to confront uncomfortable truths and consider the complexities of contemporary society. Holzer has also collaborated with architects and designers to create large-scale public installations. For instance, her project, Protect Protect, presented at the Venice Banal in 2007 involved displaying excerpts from declassified U.S. government documents on LED signs wrapped around the facade of the Italian pavilion. This installation highlighted issues of state surveillance, secrecy, and the erosion of civil liberties. In addition to her text-based works, Holzer has explored themes of memory, trauma, and loss in projects such as her Lustmord series. Inspired by historical accounts of violence against women, these works combined text, imagery, and objects to address themselves of victimhood, gender-based violence, and societal attitudes towards women. Holzer's contributions to the art world have earned her numerous accolades, including the Golden Lion at the Venice Banal in 1990. Her works are held in prestigious collections worldwide, and she has exhibited in major museums and galleries, including the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Guggenheim Museum, Bilbao, and the Tate Modern in London. Jenny Holzer's art challenges viewers to question their assumptions, confront uncomfortable truths, and engage in critical dialogue. By bringing her text-based works into public spaces, she disrupts the ordinary and confronts audiences with powerful messages. Through her use of language, Holzer amplifies marginalized voices, exposes systems of power, and encourages viewers to actively participate in the shaping of society. Her enduring impact as an artist lies in her ability to use words as a tool for social and political transformation. Adrian Piper, born in 1948 in New York City, is a pivotal figure in conceptual art, philosophy, and critical race theory. Her upbringing was shaped by a multicultural environment and a family deeply involved in civil rights activism. Growing up in a progressive household, Piper was exposed to discussions about racial injustice, equality, and social activism from an early age. Her academic journey played a crucial role in shaping her intellectual and artistic pursuits. Piper studied at the Art Students League of New York and later received a BA in philosophy with a minor in medieval and renaissance musicology from the City College of New York. She continued her studies at Harvard University, earning a PhD in philosophy in 1981. This multidisciplinary education provided her with a unique foundation for her future artistic endeavors, blending philosophical inquiry with artistic expression. Piper's early years were marked by a deep engagement with conceptual art and performance, exploring themes of identity, race, gender, and the human condition. Influenced by her philosophical background, she employed art as a means of examining societal constructs and challenging prevailing norms and prejudices. Her upbringing in a politically active family, coupled with her academic pursuits in philosophy and the arts, formed the bedrock for her lifelong commitment to using art as a tool for social critique and change. These formative experiences and influences laid the groundwork for Piper's groundbreaking contributions to art, philosophy, and critical theory, establishing her as a trailblazer in the realms of conceptualism and social activism within contemporary art. Adrian Piper's early works were deeply influenced by the cultural and socio-political environment in which she was raised, as well as her academic pursuits in philosophy and the arts. These multifaceted influences profoundly shaped her artistic trajectory and thematic explorations. Family Background and Civil Rights Activism Growing up in a family actively involved in civil rights activism deeply influenced Piper's social consciousness. Discussions about racial equality, justice, and societal inequalities were prevalent in her upbringing. This awareness of racial issues and social injustices became a recurring theme in her work. For instance, her piece, The Mystic Being, 1972-1975, featured Piper assuming the persona of a fictional black male character, using it as a tool to challenge racial stereotypes and examine identity politics. Multicultural Environment Being raised in a diverse and multicultural environment, New York City exposed Piper to a variety of cultures, perspectives, and experiences. This exposure to diversity informed her understanding of identity, race, and cultural constructs. Her exploration of identity and the concept of passing in works like Passing for White, 1992, reflected her experiences navigating racial boundaries and societal perceptions of identity. 
philosophical studies, Piper's academic pursuits and philosophy significantly impacted her artistic development. Her philosophical inquiries into topics like personal identity, moral responsibility, and the nature of reality provided a conceptual framework for her art. This philosophical grounding infused her work with depth and intellectual rigor, evident in pieces like Funk Lessons. 1983 to 1984, which combined performance art with philosophical concepts about individual agency and social behavior. Conceptual Art and Performance Piper's engagement with conceptual art and performance during her formative years had a profound impact on her artistic expression. Her early works often blurred the lines between art and life, utilizing performance as a medium for social commentary and introspection. For instance, in Catalysis, 1970, she engaged in public performances to challenge social norms and provoke reactions from passersby, highlighting the intersections between art and societal behavior. These diverse influences converged to shape Piper's artistic vision, allowing her to create thought-provoking and socially charged works that challenged viewers to confront issues of race, identity, and societal norms. Her multidisciplinary approach, informed by her background in philosophy and activism, empowered her to become a pioneering figure in conceptual art, using her art as a tool for both personal exploration and societal critique. Adrian Piper's artistic style defies conventional categorization, characterized by a multidisciplinary approach that blends conceptual art, performance, installation, and philosophical inquiry. Her of war is marked by a relentless interrogation of societal norms, identity, race, and the human condition. Conceptual Depth and Philosophical Inquiry Piper's background in philosophy profoundly influenced her artistic approach. Her works often engaged viewers in philosophical introspection, challenging them to confront complex ethical and existential questions. Pieces like My Calling Card No. 1, 1986-1990, exemplify this approach using text-based art to explore the issues of identity, truth, and self-definition. Performance Art and Self-Exploration Piper utilized performance's art as a powerful tool for personal exploration and societal critique. Her performance series, The Mythic Being, involved assuming the character of a fictional black male figure, subverting racial and gender stereotypes. Through this alter ego, she addressed societal perceptions and expectations, merging art and life in a thought-provoking manner. Challenging Societal Norms Piper's art often aimed at challenging societal norms and prejudices. In Close to Home, 1992, she confronted issues of racial passing and identity by displaying a photograph of herself alongside an image of a Ku Klux Klan member, inviting viewers to reflect on racial identity and societal perceptions. Text-based and conceptual works Piper frequently employed text-based art as a means of communication and provocation. Her use of language and artworks like What It's Like, What It Is, Number 3, or Everything presented viewers with thought-provoking statements or questions, challenging them to reconsider their perspectives on various social, political, and existential matters. Installation and Spatial Arrangement Piper's installations often engage the viewers in immersive experiences. For example, her installation Corners, 1998, uses mirrors and surveillance cameras to create an environment that reflected issues of visibility, social control, and self-awareness. Piper's artistic style was not confined to a particular medium or technique, but rather encompassed a diverse range of approaches, united by a common thread of critical inquiry and social consciousness. Her ability to merge philosophical depth with artistic expression challenged viewers to confront uncomfortable truths, re-examine societal constructs, and engage in profound introspection. Her work continues to be celebrated for its intellectual rigor, its social relevance, and its capacity to provoke meaningful discourse. Adrian Piper's career is marked by several significant works that not only showcase her artistic brilliance, but also encapsulate her commitment to challenging societal norms and exploring complex themes. Here are three notable projects. The Mythic Being. This performance series featured Piper adopting the persona of a fictional black male character named The Mythic Being. Through this alter ego, Piper confronted racial and gender stereotypes, engaging in public spaces and documenting interactions through photographs and written accounts. The project challenged societal perceptions of identity, race, and masculinity, provoking discussions about societal roles and cultural constructs. Its significance lies in its pioneering approach to using performance as a means of addressing complex socio-political issues, cementing Piper's legacy as a trailblazer in conceptual and performance art. Funk Lessons In this performance piece, Piper taught funk dance classes and art galleries in public spaces. It combined elements of dance, social engagement, philosophical inquiry, inviting participants to explore issues of personal agency, social behavior, and cultural expression. Through movement and interaction, Piper encouraged participants to consider their roles within societal structures, challenging them to navigate issues of freedom, individuality, and conformity. The project's blend of artistic expression and societal commentary highlighted Piper's ability to merge philosophical depth with accessible and engaging forms of art. What It's Like, What It Is, number three, 
This text bakes artwork featured a confrontational statement about racism and social responsibility. Displayed in public spaces, the piece invited viewers to confront uncomfortable truths about racism and their complicity in societal injustices. Piper's use of language as a tool for provocation and reflection resonated deeply, urging viewers to consider their own biases and societal responsibilities. The work's directedness and rawness underscored Piper's commitment to initiating critical dialogue through art, compelling viewers to engage with uncomfortable but essential topics. These projects are significant within Piper's body of work for their innovative use of performance, text, and social engagement to confront issues of race, identity, and societal norms. Their influence extends beyond the art world, sparking discussions about cultural perceptions, power dynamics, and personal responsibility. Piper's ability to merge intellectual inquiry with accessible art forms solidified her reputation as an artist who not only challenged perceptions, but also inspired introspection and social change through her work. Adrian Piper has received significant recognition in the art world, with numerous exhibitions, awards, and critical acclaim throughout her career. Piper's works have been exhibited in prestigious institutions worldwide, including the Museum of Modern Art and the Whitney Museum of Museum of, in New York. The Tate Modern in London, the Documentia, a renowned international exhibition of contemporary art in Casal, Germany. Her inclusion in major exhibitions like the Venice Banal and the Banal of Sydney highlighted the global impact of her art and its relevance in international art discourse. Piper was awarded the Golden Lion for the Best Artist in the 56th Venice Benil in 2015, a highly prestigious award that's recognized for outstanding contributions in contemporary art. This acknowledgement reflected the significance of her thought-provoking and socially relevant body of work. She was also awarded the Artist Award for Distinguished Body of Work by the College of Art Association in 2018, recognizing her influential contributions to the field of art. Piper's induction into the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 2017 underscored her profound impact not only in the art world, but also within broader intellectual and academic spheres. Inclusion in the prominent art expositions at esteemed institution validated Piper's balance in the canon of contemporary art, cementing her status as a pioneering figure in conceptual art performance and social commentary. Awards like the Golden Lion at the Venice Bonnell and recognition from institutions like the American Academy of Arts and Sciences affirmed the cultural and intellectual significance of Piper's art, highlighting its capacity to provoke critical discourse and challenge societal norms. Piper's achievements in the art world transcend mere accolades as her work continues to inspire discussions on race, identity, gender, and social justice. Her recognition within prestigious exhibitions and institutions exemplifies the visibility of her thought-provoking art and enduring impact on contemporary art and society. These acknowledgments not only celebrated Piper's artistic prowess, but also elevated the discourse around her art, emphasizing its relevance and influence within the art market and beyond. Her recognition in major exhibitions and by esteemed institutions underscores the enduring significance of her contributions to the art and cultural dialogue.